hey, talk to me about waking up the soil. <laughs> From Scott Stroberg's experience on your operation. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, every piece was different. I had some that it really didn't take a whole lot. Um, the sandier stuff, the stuff where, uh, <laughs> here's a good one. I have two quarters, um, one that I'd been farming I think since 2014 and one that I started farming in 2021. Well, 2014, I started the whole, you know, I got to raise a hundred, I got to raise 110 bushel wheat out there. <laughs> you know, I got to, I got to dump it on. You were, you, know, you were the playing bushel game. Yeah. I was playing the bushel <laughs> game. You got to dump the chemicals on. And then, so I had that piece. And then in 2021, I don't know, it's a half mile away. Started farming this piece. The guy had done tillage um no chemicals really no fertilizers and i went out there i put 120 pounds of humic on both of those the one that had the fastest response was the one that did no chemicals no fertilizers for how many ever years compared guy compared to what i did over here how did that make (laughs) how did that make you feel you know i guess lucky to figure out that Mm -hmm. I did something wrong and now that I know and not keep doing it. So knowing what not to do. Yeah, correct. Okay. Um, Keep going. Man. We're talking about waking up soil, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, by far the easiest way to do it is to stick biology in furrow. I mean, biology in furrow... You put it right there with the seed. I mean, with the the right kind, obviously there's getting to be a lot of stuff on the market. I don't know a lot about a lot of it. About like the live biological live, side. Live biology. Yeah, I mean, maybe it'll help you year one. I'd be scared of what's going to happen down the road. I mean, if you're focusing on one thing, phosphorus, potassium, and that's what you're trying to extract, I think it will create an unbalance of the soil. Interesting. So you got me to the word that I talk about all the time, balance. Okay. So talk, keep going. Talk to me about balance. So the goal to waking up the soil and creating a healthy system is to get a balance. Okay. And that is what I have found with the dry humic and furrow, with the liquid humic, with a good micro package. It's not something that you even see. I mean, you see it year one, but even year two, you'll start to see a response when you put together a good good package like that so i'm going to jump back to from being newbie farmer to being (laughs) josh pretzer so i had this talk with shane um and i told him i said uh we were talking about rate rate testing on humix and i told him i said man the thing on my operation mine that i that i noticed not other people's but now having this conversation I'm getting this a similar response of guys having said I applied I didn't I was I, I was I mean per, as farmers were looking for that line you know oh the left side <laughs> is greener than the right side therefore what I did was amazing um you know but I got one I've got one farm I bought it three years ago have really been trying to uh one half of it has struggled for a long time it really has producing much of a crop started applying heat mix I, I put a lot of dry i put like 350 pounds of dry on this t- about 25 acre area bean actually put it on for me so who knows how much got put on but uh i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> um anyway and so uh the thing i noticed is that my consistency like i saw a better crop i saw a better crop it wasn't like crazy better but then we had a bad year and it was still a pretty good crop Mm -hmm. when it's normally nothing out there in that area. Um, And then the next year we had a fairly good year and it was a pretty good crop. It's like, it's raised my consistency, like the soil and it. So here's a little backstory on it. I mean, before we farmed it, it was tillage, 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 tillage. And we'd have floods. This is in the floodplain. And the flood would break across it. Actually, no, in this spot. That's the next thing. I'll tell and you're you won't be surprised by this. You'll you'll think this is great. Um, and so the flood would actually break across this portion of the ground. It was taking topsoil. Mm-hmm. And 
um, this is an area uh, that has the, the and the rest of the farm is great productive dirt. When we we rented it before we bought before I bought it, the landowner was not interested in paying for any inputs whatsoever. I mean, they it was a struggle to get them to pay for just basics you know, herbicide, anything. In fact, we didn't plant corn there because the landowner didn't want to talk, didn't want to pay for fertilizer. They're just stingy, really, really stingy. They're like, nope, just do beans. Beans are cheap and easy and they pay good. And just, just beans, 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 beans. And we, okay, we need, we really, I'm trying to teach them the value of, of crop rotation and be like, yes, in our area, beans are a very profitable crop. And they're like, well, we don't make as much profit with wheat. Like, okay, no, you don't. But the year after, do you see an increase in yield production in soybeans? Yes, we do. Does that pay f- for the lack of income on the wheat year? Yes, it does. Okay, we want beans. Yeah, they're really, I mean, they're <laughs> just money hungry is all they were. Um, their family, so I can say that. <laughs> so but, there's a shortage of carbon going on in yeah, the soil. Yeah, absolutely. Oxygen, carbon. Yeah, and yeah. so they go, uh, I purchased the piece of ground. I immediately have it soil tested. I'm like, this place is going to be, and I asked my dad, I said, dad, because he grew up all around this property. Has this thing ever had fertility put on? He's like, no. I'm like, man, this thing is going to be mined to crap. That was my thought process. But anyway, minimum herbicides, minimum, I mean, like minimum fertility, all that stuff. This was a bare bones. Um, and we, we actually... Some people will be like, well, you should have done something as a farmer to, you know, supplement this or whatever. It, it, the, the way this was all set up is I literally didn't know if she was going to sell it at any given moment. And I didn't know if they were going to sell it to our family. Like, it would have been a coin flip of, nope, highest bid. Like, that was the kind of thing I was dealing with. Okay, I'm going to farm this as though it's a one-year lease agreement. Um, and so I had it soil tested. It's one of the highest fertility farms we own. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major podcast platforms. Um, We're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.